Heather, good morning. Jason, good morning. And it's actually morning. It is, which is wonderful. It's so good For to be. Uh, there are so many reasons to be thankful. As we yes. are recording this, it's the the Saturday after Thanksgiving, and I'm just full of gratitude and thankfulness. And listener, I hope you are as well. And Heather, I hope you are as well, or viewer. I, am. I know some folk, or- some folks who are watching this on the YouTube. Uh, thank you so much for falling asleep Viewing. to this or whatever you're doing, uh, putting this on in the background, or if you're doing the dishes right now and you're like, oh, I'd really love to know what's going on in chapter six of The Hobbit. I had to look up what number was. Uh, oh, that you know, like, great. I'm glad you're here. We're glad you're here. We're thankful for you. And, so uh, you know, for you. we would love for you to tell your friends and enemies about this show as well. Uh, you know, if you're like, I think these people really like it, let them know. If you're like, I think these people really hate it, let them know too. Uh, and please review and rate and like and subscribe and ring that bell. All the things that the kids on the on the internets are saying. Or you can send us an email. Wow. Heather, you, what? <laughs> are you just, all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just hearing how old we are as you're saying these things. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's how it is. Yeah. I mean, I know. Yeah. It's fine. I, but people of uh, all generations, mm-hmm. ours and older, are still sending email. Uh, mm-hmm. And the young people don't really do email anymore, which is annoying. No. DMs. I love email. But yeah, <laughs> like text messages for like business transactions and whatever. It's like, I don't, this is not where this happens. Like, send me an email. <laughs> it's not exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Uh, like, yes. I, you want me to track, you want me to track your requests for work? In the same our area where I send my brother reels, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, but we did get an email from we uh, did a, a longtime friend of uh, I mean, not so much the show as much as you and I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've we've known Ian pretty much our whole lives. Yeah, like I I think since I was like three, four, however long we yeah. went to long time Cedar Park. <laughs> yeah, and Ian sent us an email this week. <clears throat> And I didn't know he was listening, but uh, this is I, I, this is what he said. He didn't say hi or anything. He also didn't sign his email, uh, which again, <laughs> email etiquette, Ian. Say hello, Jason and Heather, or hello, Hobbit Forming Podcast, or greetings. I hope this finds you well. Or even just say good morning anytime. Hey, email good morning anytime. Uh, good morning. Just finished episode five called Goblins and Vampires. I think it was. No, uh, nope. just have to say, <laughs> I think we can all agree. Twilight ruined vampires for everyone. Agree. Agreed. Awful. Dot, dot, dot. And I think 99% of America has a poor Burger King experience. Okay. Uh, I have a long <laughs> drive home from work, so I've smashed through episodes one through six pretty quick. I enjoy the show enough where I got I get irritated when it gets interrupted by phone calls. From my wife and others. <laughs> Last thought, oh. Salt, which is a band that I used to be in, needs to get back Gosh. together to do a Hobbit rock opera. Seriously, enjoying the content. It's really inspired me to read the book by way of the movie. Hope you guys and your families <laughs> are doing well outside of Facebook life. Yes, Ian. Thanks, However you engage right. with this content, this story is great. So yeah. please, please engage with the book f- primarily because the movie is too much. The movie... The movie- has too much stuff. It's too oh. long. The, well, and the, there's three for this one book. Yeah, there's too much. Unnecessary. Okay. Peter Jackson didn't was more worried if he could whether or not he should or whatever the quote from Jurassic Park is. And garbage <laughs> finds a way. And so it found a way into that movie. <laughs> so yeah, the books are the book is better, and then not just because I'm a I'm a mega nerd. I, I there are a lot of times where I'm like, yeah, the movie's actually way better than the book on different things, but the books books are better in yeah. this case. So anyway, Heather, yeah. we should talk about this Jason. chapter, uh, chapter six, Oof. out of the frying pan into the fire. Guys, I again read it and then listened to it, so I'm I'm consuming each chapter twice isn't it great and i like i truly hate myself <laughs> for it. like what is happening to me um but it's great everything's great all right so uh chapter five chapter he had six. just gotten away oh. i know but he had just like we ended with him getting away from the goblins still with the ring on 
Okay. So now into chapter six. <clears throat> he escaped from the goblin. He lost his hood, his cloak, his food, his pony, his buttons, and his friends. And I just, I don't know why, but I mean, that was like the second sentence of the chapter, but I was laughing so hard that he lost his buttons and like how upset he is. He brings them up again later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and anyway, um, made it to the other side of the Misty Mountains. Uh, the little speech he gives, where, oh, ever could they be? Sounds like, you know, a poorly acted children's play. Uh, so was he, we can talk about it later. Um, he realizes it's probably his duty to go back and and find his friends but then he hears voices and it's his buddies and they're all talking smack about him and gandalf is like no he's a good dude he's all right that was a great um, gandalf thank you i've been working on it <laughs> i've been trying so good yeah um but gandalf is like i only bring things of use so so drat all of you uh bilbo appears they like him again he doesn't say anything about the ring sneaky little bugger um, and he then regales them with his riddle game with Gollum and his escape from the tunnels, again, leaving out the bit about the ring, helping him to jump over Gollum and escape. Um, and then Bilbo wanted to know about their escape. And so Gandalf like feigns humility. Um, but you know, he knew, he knew what he was doing magic wise because he's Gandalf the gray mm -hmm. and he knows, um, he was, Surprised that the goblins were in the path that they took, but managed to get them out. He then finds out, hey, it's now Thursday. You were out for a couple days. Or this whole thing took time for a couple days. So time is different in goblin tunnels? Or was he out for that long? Because it didn't seem like he was riddling with Gollum for that long. But put a pin know. in that. We'll come back. Oh, that's the answer? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how, <laughs> how it could possibly have taken that long. Right. So, right. like, yeah. Okay. All right. It's just um, what it is. It's, yeah, whatevs. Uh, so then they need to be on their way. Bilbo hadn't eaten in days. I mean, the night before, the night before last. That is a long time. Uh, but Gandalf says, no, it's better to tighten our belts and trudge on or be made into supper, which would be worse than having no supper of our own. Yeah. And that feels like if our dad was, like, born in, like, old-timey times, like something he would have said to us on like a family trip, like dad, I'm hungry. No, <laughs> but I we have hunger at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dad. Um, okay. Uh, so you then... didn't sound like dad at all. <laughs> <laughs> what was better? Oh, hi. Hi, hungry. I'm dad. <laughs> also, dad called me this week and told me one of the jokes that I called him to tell him a couple months ago. <laughs> and I was like, dad, you can't recycle that. Anyway, so we'll come back to that. Um, so then they get caught in a bit of a landslide. They keep pushing on until they got to a clearing and they all had a bad feeling about it. And it was for a good cause because then there were all these wolves gathering together. And uh, the uh, Bilbo said something about like, man, we escaped the goblins to now be in a pack of wolves, which turned into a proverb, but it morphed its way into out of the frying pan and into the fryer, which we all use today. All the time. Um, all the time. I can't tell you how many times I've said that this week. Um, wow. Is that your Moira Rose now? <laughs> not, no. It sounded like Moira Rose. That's my dollar store with Moira Rose, because that wasn't quite. I can do a better Moira. Um, anyway, they climbed all the trees except for Bilbo, because he was too wee of a lad. Womp womp. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so Dory had to like, risk his life to get down and, and get him up and got him up just in the nick of time. Um, wargs are what these wolves are called. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, they can't climb trees, but they did guard them. And mm -hmm. the head warg, leader warg, what it, yeah. the alpha warg, alpha, uh, sure. spoke in a language that Gandalf understood. Right. Uh, and basically was like, the wargs and goblins were working together. There was supposed to be a raid that the goblins were late for, probably because of the death of the great goblin and all. Yeah, he's um, the only one with a watch. <laughs> he's the only one that knows how like time works. Maybe. I don't tunnels. know. Yeah. <gasps> oh. 
Okay. Um, all right. And so basically the raid was about to happen because there were people that were starting to make their way, like their lives in the South again. Um, and the wargs and goblins were just not having it. And they were about to like go and <clears throat> take them and eat them and mash them in a pot or whatever. Um, as the leader kept talking, Gandalf became more afraid, but you know, being Gandalf, he uses magic to start attacking the wolves by hurling flaming pine cones at them, which made me think of a childhood thing. Uh, we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and then all of a sudden, the Lord of the Eagles is introduced. And yeah. he's like, what's the commotion? Uh, does a loop with him in his right hand and left hand man, uh, a flying loop over the field. And they see the works on fi- wargs on fire. Also the goblins on their way to the woods. Um, Eagle, side note, can usually help or make goblins stop doing what they're doing, but they don't dislike them or like them or fear them or anything. They're kind mm-hmm. of indifferent to them. Yeah. But they can get them to go do their thing yes, or stop exactly. doing their thing. They Perfect. wave with both Perfect. hands and make them go away. <laughs> Fantastic. This is how I'm envisioning it. Um, goblins saw what happened to the wolves and they were laughing uh, and then put out most of the fires but stoked the fires around the trees where the Gandalf, where Gandalf, the wolf, the mother, the dwarves and Bilbo were. Um, and they sang a little song. Uh, mm-hmm. And then Gandalf taunted them back saying, go away, little boys. Um, which, <laughs> which is the weirdest part of this whole chapter for me. <laughs> little boys playing with fire or get in trouble. It's not nesting season. Um, fire all around Gandalf's tree. And then uh, Fox, the Phoenix, comes down and gets Dumbledore. I'm sorry. The Lord of the Eagle, Eagles comes down and gets Gandalf. I mean, straight from this book. Yeah. Um, Eagles come and get the rest of them. Uh, Bilbo nearly got left behind again. Uh, the Lord of the Eagles wants their prisoners, so off they go again. I skipped a little chunk, whatever. Uh, but prisoners meant the prisoners rescued from the goblins, not... They were now eagle prisoners uh, because Gandalf and the eagle lord were buddies because he healed him Mm -hmm. from an arrow wound or whatnot. Yeah, some Um, time ago. Some time ago. It doesn't say how long ago. No. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, And Gandalf was like, hey, take us where we need to go. You know, sit for chat kind of thing. Um, And he was like, right. Like I do you a solid. That's what you said. Right. Is that how to? That's the expression, but, but like they, okay. they haven't actually, they're square now. So oh. like, oh, dang Gandalf, it. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So now Gandalf technically now owes Gandalf them. Is in there. Okay. But it doesn't matter. Yep. It'll be, okay, it's it'll, it'll be important later. Will it really? In a, in a later book, much later. Of course it will be because. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, eagles wouldn't take them anywhere men were since they didn't want to get arrowed. Instead, they needed to take them as uh, they agreed that they would be taken as far uh, as they could without fear of being shot. And then they ate. And Bilbo, the ungrateful bugger, was like, I'd rather have bread and butter than this spit of meat. Um, and then he slept well, but dreamed of looking for something at home that he couldn't remember what it was or what it looked like. Yeah. Is it the ring? Did he lose the ring again? Or no. not again, but did he lose? Okay. No, he has the ring firmly in, in his possession. So, all right. but there I do go. think the good job. Great summary. Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I think the opening of this chapter and the end of the chapter are connected in an important way. Because okay, how so? at the beginning, you pointed out he lost all this stuff. Uh, uh, hood, cloak, food, oh, pony, buttons, yes. and his friends, right? All those things are gone. And the buttons, he keeps bringing up the buttons because it's like that last little vestige of home. Oh. Like these are like copper buttons or brass buttons. They're, they're like brass. fancy. They're yeah. part of his, uh, his Baggins heritage. And it's holding okay. him in together, right? And like the the vest is like holding him together, and is now and, tattered, and it's broken. And so then, by the end of this chapter, he's looking for something that he could not find nor remember what it looked like. And this story, I said earlier, is all about like home. It Bilbo leaves home to help other people find home, 
and then Bilbo eventually gets back home. And and so like home is a significant thing. It's important that uh, that people recognize like all Bilbo really wants is to be home, but he's open to an adventure and this adventure challenges him and leads him out of his comfort zone uh, to do things that he never thought he could do. Yeah. And so he's forgetting some of the comforts of home. And so when it like whatever he's looking for, he doesn't know what he's looking for, but he can't remember what it looks like. Uh, things are starting to fade from his memory of home. So, okay. yeah. Okay. So, wow. yeah, I think that's important to know, like just to recognize this, this theme when it comes up, like that Bilbo, it's when not he's him thinking about home. complaining about home. It's yeah. Like, no, he, he really does. Like he, he wants to be, he spent his whole life in comfort yeah. as a bachelor of means, right? He had money. He had a, the best house in the neighborhood. He had everything he could ever want. And then, but he was missing out on uh, a life of adventure. So the took side of him is like coming into play now. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. So he just, he wants to be where the people aren't. Yeah. Basically. He doesn't want to see them dancing. <laughs> No, he doesn't want to walk around on his hair. What do they call feet. him? <laughs> feet. Feet. Up yeah. where they walk, up where they talk, up where they play all day in the. Up where they walk, up where they wow. run, up where they play all day, in the, play sun. All day in the sun. Sorry. I'm free. Wish I could be part of that world. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Are yeah. we gonna get like fined for? We didn't I, sing it, so I think we're okay. I think it's fair use. <laughs> at this point okay. so okay. i don't know i don't know i hear people talk about fair use and it's like i don't know what that means and i don't think you do either <laughs> so i don't <laughs> no i'm just in general oh, just i don't think anybody knows what fair use means it's like oh, i used it fair it's fair uh, <laughs> i have just cause <laughs> <laughs> i do have cause it's because i hate him I hate uh yeah so yeah so bilbo comes and there's a couple of things that i love in this a way the way gandalf talks about him is like i feel responsible for him and <laughs> I wrote yeah. because you are. <laughs> you are. You took him from his hobbit hole. Yeah. And you were Gandalf. like, hey, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Do you want to go on an adventure? <laughs> um, and uh, and then when he comes back and tells this whole story, all the different things, Gandalf's like looking at his dwarf friends. He's like, what did I tell you? Mr. Baggins has more about him than you can guess. Uh, and but he also is like knows that he's got uh, something. Bilbo has a secret. Yeah. And Gandalf is not entirely sure what that secret is. Uh, but he Bilbo wondered if he guessed at the part of his tale that he had left out. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, so um yeah, it's and then when I love when Gandalf is telling the story, he's the way uh, it's described, uh, the wizard to tell the truth never minded explaining his cleverness more than once. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, humble brag. Yeah, he's he's totally cool with that. Um, yeah. And then, like Gandalf, no, like the way he got out is like he knew about the back door. So he when get when Bilbo yelled out, "Hey, they're, we're going to get eaten up!" And Gandalf did his little magic in the cave. He escaped, knowing that there was a back door into the mountain. Right. And th so that that's how he came back in. Is is my understanding, or did he follow them? Uh, did he follow them in in secretly and then like, yeah, I don't know. So it's just one of those things where it's like in the movie he's with them the whole time, and okay. so here's like I don't know if he's really with them or how. And anyway, so there's a a cho a choice that was made here. Um, and so in the book Gandalf is not with them the whole time. He keeps glamdering, uh, and that's how he kills the goblin, the great goblin, right. Right. And so, yeah, so he knew about the back door and he's like, well, I'm going to have to get a decent giant to like book up the front door. Um, <laughs> so which is Are interesting. Giants? Yeah, because it's like we learned about giants, rock giants, like in the the storm chapter. Yeah. And it's like, oh, so they're not like malevolent. They're not like trolls. The, yeah. They're just giants. They live in the like okay. these these rock giants are just out there and like they'll be like, oh, I'll help you, Gandalf. You seem like a good dude. Yeah. Bye, okay. buddy. I yeah. hope you find your dad. We watched that last night while we put up our Christmas tree. Oh. So, yeah. 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 Anyway. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So the 
how the time works that that was a question you had i have no idea how that could possibly work it doesn't seem like it should take that long for this these no. events to happen so i don't know if bilbo was in some kind of coma and gandalf and the dwarves took a really long way out i don't know right but then they just like sat there at the yeah waiting yeah like yeah. i don't know if i went missing from my group of friends i would hope they wouldn't just sit there complaining about how useless you are yeah right <laughs> that heather gosh why did you i mean why her? do i have to carry her all the time <laughs> yeah. she has legs drive um, your chevro legs and get out of here <laughs> oh lord what was our first car uh chevy cavalier chevy cavalier Ch yeah 1985 I, I know the chevy name cavalier. i just couldn't remember the brand yeah, yeah it was anyway. it was a legend it was pretty terrible. The way I like to talk about that car is that's the car I got for my brother's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Because <laughs> he got it like the summer after he graduated, he got his driver's and license. Then he, went away then he went to college and the car was here. <laughs> so <laughs> I got a car for my brother's birthday. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's right. That's right. I do remember uh, like, TPing that car and Oreoing the car. Like we mm -hmm. took Oreos and put them all over every single window. Yeah, that was like, great. Undid them. That was not fun to clean up. But yeah. Yeah. So they run away. <laughs> and then Bilbo, like when they hear the wolves, I love the way it talks about the wolves. There were no wolves living near Mr. Baggins' hole at home, but he had he knew that noise. He had to describe him often enough in tales. One of his elder cousins on the took side. <laughs> who had been a great traveler <laughs> used to imitate it to frighten him. And uh, yeah. So like the sound of a howling dog. Yeah. Is instinctually in, 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 in all kinds of creatures, but even in humans today, it's one of those things where it's like, that doesn't sound mm -hmm. good. Right. Yeah. Like, a, like we have coyotes in our region. Mm -hmm. uh, and like it's, by region, I mean, next door at the high school, like there's coyotes, right. like, <laughs> <laughs> living in the woods there um yeah. and so every once in a while i'll hear them in the middle of the night like howling hear, like crazy there is a it's like a partially developed piece of land behind our house um that's just called starting, oklahoma <laughs> well, uh it's starting to like get developed again but it's uh like i will randomly hear like shrieking animals back there and uh, looked up like the the sound, uh, and it's a frog, <laughs> I guess. Like the yeah, the frog like like screams. Um, but I think like it must also be more than that <laughs> because this is these are gnarly sounds. Maybe so. <laughs> maybe the developers opened up some kind of Hellgate, and you've got a Buffy the Vampire situation. I think so. Yeah, it could I think be. So. Anyway. <laughs> good yeah. luck with that uh thanks, thanks. <laughs> the yeah so in another interesting thing is the way the gob the goblins and the wolves and the wargs have some kind of weird alliance uh and they work together like i yeah. i find that to be like the way uh the way that tolkien writes about it is like of course everybody knows this um but no it's way. like i don't actually know this <laughs> like <laughs> you know can like, you like, explain like, can you just give me a little bit more information about how they formed this alliance? Whatever. But right. Anyway. Um, yeah. So they climb up the trees. Right. And the uh, I do love the gray wolf talking and Gandalf understands it, which right. is one more element of Gandalf being this mysterious being who knows way more than we can tell. So and like, there is there a book explaining all the things that Gandalf knows? No, no. I so like I mean, it's, really the, missed, it's missed these books. It's the books we're reading right now. That's going to explain like, also what Gandalf knows. Uh, but he's right. just he's been around <laughs> for thousands of years, right? And so right. he and he has a supernatural nature to him. So like he showed up old. He wasn't born. <laughs> He showed up old, right? And so he is kind of like an, he's an angel type figure in okay. in these stories. Okay. 
and in in the world that that Tolkien has created, Gandalf is is like an angel. Um, in that he is terrifying. He shows up whenever he wants, and he brings weird messages. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Um, the so he knows like the the different languages of Middle Earth. Like he know he can communicate with people from different cultures and different languages. Sure. He knows Elvish. He knows Dwarvish. He knows the dark speech. <gasps> So, yeah, so he knows things. And so the gray wolf is maybe speaking the dark speech, the dreadful language oh. of the wargs, maybe some kind of derivative of like Sauron's dark language. Um, so because these are wargs and goblins and orcs and goblins and orcs are kind of similar, like those are used interchangeably in these books. Um, but uh, they're all servants of the dark one. Okay. It, uh, fundamentally, like they're not they're not here for the the good of the world. And so, yeah. So that might be part of why they are in alliance. So in cahoots. Yeah. And then this Eagle shows up and what did you notice about the, the, the Eagles introduction? Uh, that he just was like there. Yes. There is like, a, a narrator change of perspective yes and this is the first time in this book this has happened where something is happening where bilbo is not there oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> isn't that weird okay. like it took okay. it took 96 pages in my edition to get to a, a four <laughs> wow uh to get to a second perspective uh of the story because even when gandalf is talking to the dwarves bilbo hears it he's off to the side right hearing them talk about it right so this is the first time in this book where it's like, what? what? <laughs> Cause I was just reading along. Like, what is all this uproar in the forest tonight? Said the Lord of the Eagles. And like, what the heck? Yeah. So this must be something that like was later told to Bilbo as he's compiling this. And like when like, he's on his way back, maybe. He's no, like when resin. he's up in the, in the airy, like at dinner. Oh, it was like, how did you guys know we, we needed your help? And so somebody, one of the Eagles told him, Wait, the airy? Airy. I know. But it's but pronounced that, airy. That was like the the cafe the at Northwest University. Spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's an eagle's nest. Clever. Yeah. Okay. Is everything okay just, over there? One of my lights just turned <laughs> off. Uh so yeah. Here, so here. they so this is like somehow like this was communicated back to back to Bilbo. But it was I, uh told in this weird like what jarring way and i didn't yeah. like that very much so i also like he's just like i hear wolf voices are the goblins that mischief in the woods <laughs> that's i that's how i assume he sounds <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the 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 eagles uh heather as you continue Don't sound like that no uh as you continue to read more of this story and you're going to get mm -hmm. into a point where you're going to meet some eagles later and and you may be tempted to say, why didn't they just use the eagles all the time? And the, the, I was tempted to say that. That already. is a dumb question. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> well, uh, but thanks. it's a, it's not your fault that is a dumb question. Um, but the eagles are nobody's servant, and they're not. They don't owe like they Gandalf like helped this one and so he's like i'll help you but they don't actually owe anybody any favors okay and so nobody can just tell the eagles what to do right but in the lore of the of the whole thing mm -hmm. there's all these different like divine figures and so one of them is like a lord over the birds of the air manway uh is his name uh and uh <laughs> And so, like, these are servants of Manway. I'm pretty sure it's Manway. I may be wrong, actually. So if you, a listener, if you know, prove it. Um, send me an email, hobbitforming at gmail.com. Uh, but, uh, and so they are, like, really just servant. They, they're, they're just their own entities. They're not really concerned. Like, they're 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 not kindly birds. Uh, some are cowardly and cruel, but the ancient race of northern mountains were the greatest of all the birds. I mean, they're talking. Yeah. They're, they're they're just their own people, right? Their own birds. Um, 
And so when you get to the place where you see the Eagles intervening in any of the story, it's not, it's not because of like, uh, they're like, oh, we should really help these people as much as it's like Manway or Luvatar, uh, the, the, the divine figures are like, this is the time to send, like they are like higher beings than elves or dwarves or men or hobbits or wizards. They are not, uh, they, they don't just work for us. So when people say, why didn't they just use the Eagles the whole time? You don't get to use Eagles that way. Interesting. You, okay. you don't use Eagles. <laughs> so, and so like in the story, like the ring, like there's all these things where it's like, well, that was lucky, but there's a, a story of fate and, uh, and destiny and things coming together at just the right time. That is more than just like, oh, that was lucky. There's like a divine hand at work in okay. this story that is uh, more than just luck. But it feels like luck as the people are living through it. Yeah. Right. You all right? Did I, I, did I, yeah. Did I fire hose too much there? I mean, a little, but that is helpful so that I don't see these eagles again in the future and be like, the heck? Like, why wouldn't you just stick with these buddies of yours? Well, and so, partly why it was because they don't want to get shot out by arrows. They don't want to get shot. Yeah. yeah. So they by are also like, you. yeah, they're like, we know that your kind are bad. Un unwinged types <laughs> don't like us. Yeah. So we're not going to just go fly around. Instead, we're just going to get their sheep and eat them. Uh, and so, you know, they're going to so do... are they like, are they like actual eagles or are these like men with wings and talons? <laughs> they are actual eagles. Okay. They're, just gigantic. They're huge. Like they're, they're big. like the size of the eagle that the rescuers down under would yes, have you exactly believe. Exactly right. Okay. Exactly right. That is, is a perfect <laughs> image. Yes. <laughs> okay. That movie is awesome. Uh, <laughs> that movie is so great. <laughs> Oh man, that's like, it's like one of the rare instances where the sequel is way better than the original. So much better. The original, the original Rescuers is just sad and depressing and like dark. And this is like, no, there's a big, huge eagle. Yeah. <laughs> and we're in yeah. Australia. Come on. And Princess, how'd these mice get here? The, <laughs> is that the lizard's name? How'd these yes. mice get here? By Albatross. Yeah, I know. It's that's everything about there. that story is amazing. I love that movie. Anyway, uh, so. Okay. We need to keep moving. I'm sorry. We do. So uh, sorry, listener. <laughs> so yeah, so the eagles come and they rescue them, and then they're up on the the, the Irie Airy and learning Wait, about. We, hmm? we skipped so much. Okay, you want to talk about what do you want to talk about? Well, when the, Gandalf calls the goblins little boys. Well, that is funny. Yes. The, 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 the note I boys. wrote in here was. Is this Tolkien telling his sons not to be pyros? Oh, that's, maybe. That's the note I wrote right there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, no. These are stories he's telling his kids, right? And so it's like, listen, little boys, you play with fire, you're going to get burned. So, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no, what I was thinking, though, was uh, when Gandalf just starts, like, throwing the fiery pine cones at them. Mm -hmm. Um that reminded me of when we had uh for for those of you who don't know jason and i grew up in the 90s uh 80s in and the, 90s in the previous century the previous century we are the last the millennium the 1900s um and we were home alone basically what from the time i was in like first grade on like i mean I our parents were around it's they not were like around. we were a party of five boxcar children situation. <laughs> so Apple dumpling gang or whatever. Um, buttercream gang. That's what it is. Apple dumpling oh, gang man. is a different movie, but buttercream yeah, that's gang is completely what, different what we story. were allowed to yes. watch. Right. Anyway, but we like during the summer, we were home by ourselves and because my parents were working and the babysitters that they had had before uh, were horrendous. Questionable absolutely terrible. Like they couldn't have found them on Craigslist because that wasn't a thing, but it must have been like they got a flyer from marketplace or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, 
so I like kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so we were home by ourselves and, you know, three children, three mischievous children home by themselves aren't always going to make the best decisions. Sometimes they will find the video camera and record the dog being on the couch, which the yeah. dog was not supposed to be. Dog was or, not supposed to be in the house. No. Uh, or throw pepperoni at each other and hit the <laughs> fabric curtains and be like, I hope mom and dad don't see. <laughs> well, they don't so. wonder what these <laughs> grease circles are. <laughs> Anyway, so one of the times that we were home alone, we decided to make like booby traps um, yeah. in our side yard for the mm-hmm. neighbor kids to go through. And like tiger uh, traps, like dig a hole and people fall in it, put branches yeah. over it. Yeah. Like a bucket of water and mud and all that yeah. stuff. And all the holes were like maybe six inches deep because digging is hard. <laughs> digging is impossible. <laughs> That's not real. Um, Anyway, so yeah, the holes weren't that deep. Um, But we also, we found like pine cones because there was a plethora in our side yard. And we would take my mom's like stay pins uh, or stick pins or needles, whatever, uh, and put them, put like them through electrical tape and then wrap the electrical tape around pine cones and put them kind of in the like the course <laughs> the booby trap course for people to like go through and poor david bertram picked him up i remember him picking one up and it just like getting him like like a cactus basically and uh then he fell into the six inch hole and anyway so the fiery pine cones reminded me of that wow we can keep i going. have no memory of the pine <laughs> you cones. don't remember no. that oh no. my god Gosh. I do remember David Bertram jumping out of our living room window, though, for fun. He didn't jump out of it. Well, he jumped out of it one time, but then Lori, which Lori, I know you're listening to this, Auntie Lori. Uh, he was irritating her so much one time that she was like, David, I swear to God, if you do this again, I'm going to throw you out that window. And he did it again. And she picked him up straight up like DJ Jazzy Jeff style and threw him out the second story window. <laughs> It was a split level. Yeah, it wasn't like it was. It was like a, a, a split level with a story. daylight basement. So I mean, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it was what, like six feet, seven yeah. feet, maybe. I mean, it, it more that. than you should fall out a window, but he was more defenestrated. Than you throw a child out of a window. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it was a different time. It was it a was. different time. People got it away was. with a lot more back then. Oh, but Lori, that will is... change those laws. <laughs> yeah. But that's honestly one of my favorite childhood memories is seeing David Bertrand be thrown out there, our living room window. So, wow. If that's one of your favorite childhood memories, you have a very sad childhood. I do. <laughs> I have so well, many I mean, better I, memories. <laughs> I was told that I was traded. So I think it didn't start out well for Heather. <laughs> I got to get a present for Mark. Make Shut a note. up. <laughs> Mark oh is the sibling that uh, my brother Ken and I, also Heather's brother by trade, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> convinced Heather that we ch- mom and dad traded Heather, uh, Mark for Heather because they wanted a daughter, and so at a swap meet, yeah, that they took and... <laughs> they took Mark to the swap meet and came back with me. And yeah, when we came I up asked... with this, when we were like seven and five years old, <laughs> yeah, and I asked my dad. Cause they told me this and I was like, dad, daddy, am I really adopted? And our dad looks at me and goes, yeah. <laughs> like, of course, uh, of course yeah. you are. Why wouldn't you be? Um, so yeah, I truly thought I was adopted for years. I thought I was Jewish for years. What? Um, Why? You didn't know because pastor Joe always, we always oh. had like the Passover Seder thing mm-hmm. at around Easter and he always wore a yarmulke to the um, the Easter play. And so I was like, oh, we must be Jewish. And it wasn't until sixth grade that Nathan Peterson was just like, hey, what are you guys doing for whatever? I can't remember which holiday it was because, again, I thought I was Jewish. Um, and it, he was, I was like, I don't know. What are you talking about? And he goes, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> you Like your family should probably like I'm not coming to school for a few days like kind of thing I was like oh maybe I'm not Jewish (laughs) so 
I had no idea uh, that you thought you were yeah. Jewish. That was not my fault. Yep. That was not. <laughs> like, no. I didn't put that in your brain. That was you no. making formulations. So, it, yeah. But, I can understand know. where you got there, though, as you explain it, because we did have all kinds of very uh, Torah observant practices at our yeah. Pentecostal church. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So the elves or the eagles rescue them and they go and talk with the the lord of the eagles and he's like i'll take you kind of a ways but not all the way yeah and so yeah but that's the and that's that's chapter that's six we did that's it chapter six and a whole bunch of other stuff that, yeah you ever have the inside of your hair headphone like itch your ear <laughs> and then you're like ah, why isn't it working that just happened to me um so anyway oh my yeah. word any other questions thoughts comments um i had written down something um but i think i lost it so it's okay all right um but no this is this is good this, this is, is good uh, this is good we did it this is good we got it done looks um, like chapter seven is a bit of a longer one yeah it's so. longer and it uh, there's a lot in this part of the book where things are just kind of happening. And you're like, why is this happening? And uh, this is kind of one of those kinds of stories. Uh, and remember, this is a children's story where. Uh, so Tolkien is trying to help kids like every chapter is like a new weird thing. Yeah. And so this is another new weird thing. <sighs> so last chapter there, the chapter we just read, there's wargs and eagles. And then this next chapter, there's Bjorn. And he is a man baby. who turns in. He's a skin changer. He is not. He is not a baby Bjorn. He's a skin changer. <laughs> that... so a werebear. A werebear. A skin changer. Yeah, like a werewolf. Werewolves are in in this world. Uh, no, they are not. They are. Yeah, for sure. And they're uh, different not, from wargs. Yeah, not in this book, okay. but around. Uh, yeah, they're uh yeah, they're servants of the dark lord. Um yeah, wargs are just wolves, like really big talky talk wolves. Uh yeah. <laughs> talky talk. Talky talk. Werewolves are, you know, werewolves. like Fenrir, Greyback, like mean. Well, kind of but no, but kind of. No? Yeah, it's not all <laughs> spelled out the way that we want it to be kind of much of Tolkien's life is like, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And you're just going to like it. Because someday, nearly 90 to a hundred years later, Heather Olson is going to read this book. And I just want her to rip her hair out whilst reading it. Yeah. Okay. Mission accomplished. You did it. You did it. Tolkien, well this long <laughs> game you've been playing. <laughs> wow. You crafty <laughs> devil. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, well, Heather, uh, if people want to send us an email or something, what should they do? They should email hobbitforming at gmail.com or Correct. they can uh, shoot us a DM at uh, hobbitformingpod on Instagram. Um, on Instagram or threads or whatnot. And you can also follow Jason's YouTube channel yes. where he does things other than this as well. Um, or if you have our phone numbers, you can text us because... We we're olds, but yeah. but please don't ask aren't. for business work or anything like <laughs> no, it's for no fun. business work. <laughs> Just like texting is for like quick communication and fun. No, right. please, please right. don't don't Just, give me a job. No, don't, don't no, give me tasks. You. And if you see a Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit slash Tolkien related reel that you think. <laughs> This just tickled me. Feel free to send it to Hobbit Forming Pod on Instagram. Yeah, uh, we that'd may, be great. We may restory it. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you share it to your story, tag us, and then we can share it as well. Yeah. 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 Like it's it. weird. It's weird. I'm having a hard time with a lot of things. Instagram. Anyway. Again, I'm on old. <laughs> so. Yeah. But Heather, we so should good. go. We should. We should. Jason, so that we can enjoy morning. the rest of this uh, Saturday. <laughs> Heather, good morning. Yes.